actually the number 24 is very, very significant. If you were here last Sabbath, I was talking about the number 24 and how it's so special that we are in 2024. It is the new year. Like every other new year, there are thousands, perhaps even millions of new year resolutions. It is what we call the New Year Resolution. A lot of people would make resolutions for the New Year because this is a common aspect of the celebrations that mark the end of a year and the beginning of another year. And it's a similar story each January. Each January, you find lots of people thinking about a new year with aims, with aspirations, with their deepest desire for personal growth into a sparky arrangement of fresh new goals. So whether the goals are to reduce weight or to pay off a debt, whether the goal is to have a better spiritual life or to become vegetarian, to become vegan, or to exercise more, or to have a positive idea about life, or to socialize more, New Year resolutions frequently begin with good motivation. And, and because it begins with good motivation, it symbolizes this sense of hope, this sense of optimism. It's like there's going to be a change. A change is possible given the large number of people who make resolutions each year. <laughs> however, however, studies have found that by February, sometime perhaps at the end of February, or sometime perhaps at the beginning of February, 80% of New Year resolutions are nowhere to be found. <laughs> In fact, new studies have found that by January the 3rd, some people have forgotten their resolutions. So according to psychologists and scientists and motivational speakers, there, there are many reasons. There are um, perhaps a couple of reasons why people don't keep to their New Year resolutions. In fact, there's an article by Time magazine. It says, how not to fail at keeping your New Year resolution. While these magazines and psychologists and scientists may make a point. I am much more interested in what the Bible says about growth and failure, about resolutions. Why? Why am I more interested in what the Bible says? Because New Year resolutions are predicated on self gratulation on self-inflatulation, on self-appreciation, and on self-aggrandizement. In addition, those resolutions kind of see humanity as persons. They don't see humanity as persons, but see humanity as machines. It can change in a second. For instance, the New Year, New Me slogan. New Year, New Me. In the New Year, is New Me. It's as if... One person is different, the person is different on 31st night. Go party, shoot all the knockouts and the fireworks, and on the 1st of January, you are different. A new person entirely. No hangover, nothing. Brand new person. But the fact is, remains that the idea, the thinking behind New, Res new Year resolution sets us up for failure. And in contrast to the focus on self, instant completion, machine-mindedness, the Bible sees spiritual growth as an improvement or as a process. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. Turn with me, everyone. This year, this is a new year, so I hope you have a Bible, you have something to write, because we are going to be digging deep. Right now, Philippians chapter 2. When we read Philippians, the book of Philippians, a lot of things just stand out. Then when you come to Philippians chapter 2, you notice Paul 
is talking about something spectacular. He's saying, friends, if there's any example you want to follow, follow the example of Christ who came down and died a dread death of a, on the cross. And after that, after that, in verse 13 of chapter 2, Paul says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to, to work out your salvation with fear and with trembling. For it is God who works in you to will, to act, in order to fulfill his good purpose. I would like to pick out a few words or phrases. Work out. You see, the phrase work out in the Greek literally means to walk down to the end point, to keep working, to accomplish something, to achieve, to finish a process, or to achieve something, or even to exercise. Yes, yes, to work out means, means to exercise your salvation. So when you go to work out your muscles in the gym, many of you have made New Year resolution to go to the gym this year. Think about this. Paul is saying, work out your salvation. It's almost like Paul is saying, go to the gym and exercise your muscles. But in this sense, he's saying, exercise your salvation. But Paul He's not saying that we should work out, work, out our, work out so we can aim a salvation. It's not what Paul is saying here. It, this, would claim, this, would, this claim would run counter to what Paul has been saying in his entire message. However, Paul intended the Philippians to hear him challenge them to live real Christian lives, to activate this free salvation that God has given them, not to work their salvation in a sense of accomplishing it, but to work it out because they have already been saved. When Paul said, work out your salvation, he didn't mean the, the Philippians needed to, work, to do works to gain salvation. He was addressing believers who already were saved and he wanted them to go through the work of being saved. So workout makes sense because if you do not practice in the gym or at home, you do not develop the ten temerity and the tenacity for, for, for to stand strong and to, be, to have muscles, it is the same thing as a child of God. You need practice. You need to practice your faith. You need to practice your Christianity. It is, if not, there will be no growth. Just like you don't have growth when you do the workouts of the exercise, wherever you're doing it, there will be no growth as a Christian. But Paul does not just say, work out your salvation. He says there's an attitude to working out the salvation. What is the attitude? Work out your salvation with what? Fear and what? Trembling. Fear and trembling does not mean that we should live our Christian lives with a constant sense of fear and the terror of hell or damnation. No, that is not the point. Instead, the fear and trembling Paul is referring to is this our field reverence. Paul is saying with reverence in the presence of God, Test out your salvation in the presence of God. Walk out your salvation in the presence of God. Do not hide. Do not put your lamp under the bushel. Let it be seen in the presence of God. With our, think about the fact that you are in the presence of God. So work it out. Think about that you are all stricken. So work it out. Think about that you have angels all around you so they are trying to watch you and observe you so work it out with fear and trembling but you say pastor <laughs> pastor you, you just talked about new year resolution isn't Paul saying the same thing no 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 because the text in context it, it follows the example of Jesus Paul is saying 
work out because Jesus has done this already, because he has laid the foundation, you follow the example and work it out. And Paul does not stop there. He doesn't just stop there and say, work out your salvation with fear and trembling and then stops there and say, all right, go, choose, bye-bye, go home. No, no, no. Paul continues. He says, because it is God in you who is working to will and to act. Amen. The Greek word for working, for God working, comes from energion. It means something that energizes. For, for, for those of you who go to the gym, you know that some people like to take protein supplements. Or um, some people, of course, we know the extreme, take steroids. I'm not talking about that. Here, Paul is saying the supplement, the energy drink, the power supplement here is not all, no other person than God doing it in your body, in your system, in your salvation. Paul is saying, go, out, go for a workout, but know that the power supplements. The energy is God himself. He is the one doing the work. So God is doing the work, but you have to be ready. God is doing the work, but you have to be open. God is doing the work, but you have to, oh, you have to say, God, I want you to work it out in me. Because those New Year resolutions usually come without God. This is so much different from the New Year resolutions because those resolutions are so self-programmed. Here we see Paul talking about achieving higher spiritual maturity only through the power and the mercy and the grace of God. So the, work, the word working is, is, is not just now. God working is a present participle, meaning it's a continuous process. It means it is not just a one-time thing where I make a new, re, new year resolution and then all of a sudden I change. No, Paul says it is God working. Paul says it is God doing the process. Paul says it is God progressing you. Paul says it is God maturing you. It is God working in you to will and to act for his own grace, his own, for, for his own will, for his own favor. And so that means... That this Christian life you and I are in is a lifetime of improvement and a lifetime of maturity. Ellen White would say, you do not become a Christian just by one bound or one jump, but you do it step by step. Day after day, Paul will say, from one level of faith to another level of faith to another level of faith, it is a process. Nevertheless, the work God is doing in us is not just a work without completion. It's not just a work that would never end. Because this reminds me of Philippians, what Paul said at the beginning of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, he says, be confident, <laughs> be confident that he who began the good work, the working he has begun, he's going to do what? Bring it to a completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So there is one day when this working, this energy making you to work out, to test your Christianity, your salvation, is going to come to an end because at that time, Christ would come. But until then, Paul says, work out. Paul says, accept God and know he is working in you. God is working in us, energizing our spiritual capabilities. God is working in us, energizing our sinful nature and bringing it from sin gradually into his presence so that we can look more like him. God is working in us because 
on our own, we can do it. In fact, that is why the, the prophet said, our righteousness are filthy rags in the presence of the Lord. So you can do anything. But who is the one doing it for you? God. And this is how God works out our salvation or God works in us because God sends Jeremiah to help him to understand what he's doing. He sends Jeremiah to a potter. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 18. God sends Jeremiah to a potter's house. And the Bible says, this is the word that came to Jeremiah. Go to a potter's house. Go down there and I'll give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him walking at a wheel. But the pot he was shaping from clay was mud in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not? <laughs> can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. And I'll see, listen, like clay in the hand of the potter, so are we all in the hands of the Lord. And that is the reason why you and I, individually, collectively, we are under construction. Jeremiah 18, 5 to 6 employs this striking imagery to illustrate how our lives are under God's control. Just like a porter making this clay, trying his best to fashion it. And then he, there's a mistake. Then he makes it again. He puts it down. Then he tries to make it up again. God says, we are clay in the hands of the Creator. It means you and I are under construction. The idea behind this imagery is to, is to arouse our desires for God to shape and to form us into a noble instrument that serves us, that serves as a manifestation of his goodness and glory. Consider your life in this manner. I want to consider my life in this way. Now I see my life this year, 2024. I want to be able to be shaped. I want to be able to be molded. I want to be able to completely be available to God in his hands so that he can shape and form me however he wants. And if I'm trusting him, if I am trusting him, if I'm giving myself, if I am just surrendering, God is able to work out my salvation. And I'm inviting you to think this way. I'm inviting you into this, this ideology. I'm inviting you into this philosophy. No, it's not even an ideology. It's not a philosophy. I'm inviting you into this God way of thinking. Because if we are not able to think this way, we will continue what we have been doing all years, thinking we are the one achieving it. So you and I are under construction. Tell someone you are under construction. No, turn to, turn to your neighbor and tell them, you are under construction. However, however, the question is, do I trust this construction process? Do I trust this process? Do we trust this process? You see, there's a nightmare every driver in Germany especially in Berlin, faces. You know what the nightmare is? Bauarbeit. Under construction. Bauarbeit. It's the fact that you think of going somewhere. You don't know that that place is under construction. You get to that place, the road is blocked, and then you have to make all the way, you have to go all the way through the state, through the city, in order to get to your destination. As a nightmare. So why drivers do not like it? Everyone 
Even the driver who gets to that point and is angry, is not happy, is thinking of how he's going to take another one hour through the state. They know that because of this maintenance, because of this construction going on on these streets or on this highway, because of the repairs, the upgrading that is going on, German roads are one of the best in the world. But the thing is, what I don't understand is, you drive through a road to today. Today, you just drive through a road. It looks good, very clean, nice. Tomorrow, they say they're doing construction. Why? It's because, it is because they are trying to make sure that things are going to be fine. And so, every driver, every person, every whoever uses the road, would have to trust the process. And you and I have to trust this construction process. Do you wish to be better at your Bible study 2024? You have to trust the process. Do you wish to grow higher in your spiritual work 2024? You have to trust the process. Do you wish to stop a particular habit you have to trust the process. My brother, my sister, my dear parents, husband and wife, this year, 2024, do not try to do it on your own. Don't try to do it on your own. Allow God to work it out for you. Allow God and trust the process. It may be slow, but you are under construction. It may be hard, but you are under construction. It may be difficult, but you are under construction. It may take time and forever, but you are under construction. While you trust the process, walk out. Meaning, continuously be available, translating the principles of Christian life into your daily life. It is not just a Sabbath thing. It is not just a, a something you do in the morning once and then the whole day you are away from God and then in the evening, no, this is something of two, four, seven. Work out because it is God working in you. You know, some construction sites are new. Some are kind of restoration sites or remodeling sites. Others are maintenance sites or upgrading sites. So for some of us, God has just begun a new construction, a new site. It could be someone, one of the teenagers, <laughs> who will get baptized this year. It could be someone who is going to have a child planted in her womb this year. I don't know what it is, but many of us are going to be new construction sites for God. It could be a bad habit you are willing to give up. You are in a new construction through God. For some of us, for others, God is remodeling. <laughs> God is restoring God is doing something that was lost, bringing it back, you know, for us. It could be you lost something. You lost something. You lost trust in people. You, you, because of how someone hurts, would hurt you, you lost trust. It could be just something that you've lost, but God is restoring it in Jesus' name. Amen. And for others, for others, God is upgrading during this maintenance work. Taking you from one level, you have achieved a lot already. You've achieved a lot already, taking you from one level to another level. From one level of faith to another level of faith. From one work experience to another work experience. From one way of being available and working with God to another way of being available and working with God. From one country to another country. From one apartment to a new house. Whatever it is, God is upgrading you. And wherever you fall, 
whether you are a new site, whether you are a site that needs re restoration, remodeling, whether you're a site that needs maintenance or upgrading. <laughs> Just trust the process because you are going through maturity. Trust the process because God is shaping you in his hands. Trust the process. Tell someone beside you, trust the process. Tell another person, trust the process. That is also my message. That's also my message for you as a congregation this year. We've achieved a lot last year. But we are not yet there. God is upgrading us. God is maintaining us. Perhaps God is restoring us. We are still in a process. We are still under construction. 2024, do not hate the process. <laughs> a department this year may fail. You know, um, a, a coordinator may not do things the way you like. But all of us together 20, in 2024, we are in a process under construction. God perfecting us in a gradual process. For some people, it is easy. For some others, it takes more time. Trust the process. A process that God will continue to walk until he appears in the clouds of heaven. A process that God will continue to do until you see Christ again. A process that God will never fail in. You see, in fact, that is why our motto this year, let's go and make disciples, is not just something you know, it's, it's not just something that is now. It is a process. Discipleship is a process. So trust the process. Trust the process, friends. And Paul says, be confident in this. Friends, be confident in this. That he who began this good process. <laughs> he who began the maturity process. He who began the work process. You as clay in the hands of God, he will bring it to completion. Amen. Amen. Stand up, with, stand up with me, friends. Stand up with me. God is going to bring the whole thing to an end. Amen. So trust the process, friends, because Christ is working in you in this new year. Be confident. Be confident that God will not start something and leave you by the wayside. And now see, be confident that God will not start helping us to grow, to make structures, to establish things, and then leave us by the wayside and leave us alone. No, 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 no. Be confident that God will bring this work he has started. Perhaps God will come this year, perhaps next year. Whenever he comes, God will bring it to a completion. But until then, until then, Trust the process. The process he has begun in you. Some, the process of removing you from a particular sickness. Some, the process of removing you from a pain. Some, the process of bringing a husband or a wife to you. Some, the process of giving you children. Some, the process may take time. And while you're trusting the process, focus on the goal. The goal you and I don't have any other goal. You think you're making a New Year resolution or people are making a New Year resolution. Our own major goal is to make heaven. And what does Paul say in Philippians 3? He says from verse 12, No, I have attained many things. <laughs> but I don't look back. I don't look back. I look forward, pressing on. Thinking about the goal. Because I know that I'm under construction. Because I know that God is working in me. This is my prayer for you as we press on to higher ground. This is my prayer for you as we press on <laughs> with a new goal. This is my prayer for you as we press on this year. Believe, trust the process. Let us sing together. I'm pressing on to a higher ground as we make this commitment this year. 
6 to 5. I'm pressing on the upward way, new eyes gaining every day. Still I put eyes on about, Lord, put my feet on higher ground. God lifts me up. 